It was a cold and breezy morning on the Albuquerque Railway. As the wind blew through the sidings, Dan the steam engine awoke with a shiver. As he opened his eyes, he remembered how he had given his much cozier berth at the sheds to his friend Clyde, who had returned after many years. Dan felt good about having his friend back, but rather upset that the controller never told him about Clyde's arrival. Oh yeah, Dan muttered to himself. I'm here in the goods yards. Well, I hope Clyde slept well. Suddenly, Dan's thoughts stopped when he saw Sir Philip Richardson walking over to him. Oh, hello, Philip. Hello, Dan. About yesterday. Yes, about that. I'm just upset that you never told me the truth about Clyde. That he was still alive after the accident. Dan... I just wanted to protect you. That's all I wanted. Dan pondered for a moment about Philip's words. Believe me, Dan, I never, ever lost respect for you. You were still my engine, and I wouldn't want to change that. I don't know, Philip. I'm still very upset about it all. <sighs> I see. Well, I haven't any time to discuss it right now. It's an incredibly busy day today. In fact, I already have a job for you. I need you to pull those coal cars on the sidings there. It's very important work that these coal cars are for a railway in Barstow, California. They have a severe coal shortage there, and we have plenty, so I arranged a deal for us to deliver some. I see. And Dan, Sir Philip paused for a moment to emphasize his point. I want you to pull it because I trust you the most to not lose your way, and to get there on time, because you're the most efficient engine based on your outstanding record of on-time arrivals. Dan began to realize that Philip truly never lost respect for him at all. In fact, the more he thought about it, the more he understood that Philip has always cared about him, even though he hadn't shared the truth about Clyde's rebuild. Thank you, sir. I'll do the job. Of course, Dan. I believe in you, and I always have. And just like that, Dan rearranged the coal cars quickly and coupled up to a brake van. Philip wished him goodbye as Dan set off for Barstow. Dan felt wonderful, racing along the line with the wind blowing between his pistons and all. Dan felt true serenity. It took him most of the day, but Dan reached Barstow with his coal cards loaded to the brim with coal. That was when he met a familiar face. Oh, hello. You again, hmm? Oh boy, it's you. I remember you. You're the outsider that came with that annoying tank engine and express coach. Yeah, that's me. I'm here to deliver your coal. There should be plenty in these cars to last a while. Just put them next to me. My driver and fireman will deal with them from here. As Dan pulled the cars next to him, he wrapped around the tracks and chuffed in front of him. What? You delivered the coal. What else do you want? I was just wondering something. How come there's a coal shortage here? Why do you care? Because I face hard times myself on my railway. Last time I saw a coal shortage, we were at the point where no one rode the express. We lost a lot of money, and we struggled to keep the railway afloat. So, so you know what it's like. Yes, I do. That's scary. Well, there's a shortage here because we didn't have the money to purchase it. The order of coal we got from you was without charge. Your controller decided to do the deal for free. I see. But is this coal going to be enough? Vinny hesitated for a moment, looking forlorn. Probably not, to be honest. I've been sitting here for a few days now without coal, unable to do any jobs. And we have no money. My driver says that the railway is going to close. And that they're probably going to send me away to the scrapyard to face the gutter torch. That's horrible. Uh, it won't happen. Because I have a plan. You'll never face the torch on my watch. And Dan whispered the plan to Vinny, as tomorrow their plan would begin. Sure enough, the next morning they loaded Vinny onto a flatbed along with the coal cars that were still full, and Dan coupled up to the train. All right, Vinny, let's get you out of here. But just as they were about to make their getaway, a rail manager spotted them and shouted angrily, Oi, just what do you think you're doing there with that engine? Quick as a flash, Dan came up with an answer. Oh, good morning, sir. I'm here to take this old engine to the scrapyard. I was told that this railway is closing soon. And since I arrived early, I can make a decommissioning more efficient. Whoa. Uh, well then, thank you. Carry on. And Dan chuffed away quickly. All right, we're in the clear. And in no time, Dan raced past the scrapyard and on towards Albuquerque. It was a long journey, but upon arrival, they were greeted by all the engines in the controller. They were pleased to see Dan return, but very surprised when they saw his cargo. My oh my, what do we have here? 
Well, sir, this engine, his name is Vinny, he's gonna be scrapped because his railway is closing. I didn't want it to happen, sir. I see. Sir Philip fell silent for a moment, and Dan began to feel uneasy. Did he act too hastily? Would Sir Philip be angry that the coal wasn't delivered? Well, I think I know of a place for him where he can be useful once again. Ah, that's good, sir. Where should I take him to? Set him down on our rails, Dan. He's going to stay with us. All the engines cheered, and even Robert had a little smile on his face. But no one was happier than Vinny, who was cheering loudest of all.